let me take this opportunity to greet you all, um, regardless of where you are. My name is Ricardo Twala. I am a financial advisor and a development coach. I work uh, at a company called Old Mutual for a division called PFA. And uh, what we do basically is financial planning where we help clients achieve their financial goals. And our work is mostly on the advice side. So we have the conversation of looking at the portfolio and then recommending based on the client's goals. Uh, the model that we use is called the goal-based model which is uh, in essence, the client decides on the goal they want to meet. And then on our side, we then help them meet that goal uh, by recommending a strategy that is going to work for that particular goal. Now, um, my conversation that I want to have today is um, still in the theme of the importance of financial planning or under the discussion of the importance of financial planning. I want to discuss mostly what we prefer that the clients do before they come to us as financial planners. And, and um, I, I segmented my discussion into four elements of uh, financial well being. Uh, the fourth one being uh, uh, planning for the future, which is the part where financial planners actually take take um, responsibility or rather they take part. So they become heavily involved. The main, the main reason why I want us to discuss this is because uh, before you actually sit in front of a financial planner, there are things that remain your responsibility as the, as the client, which we will not push to the financial planner. These are things that I believe if uh, the client wants to actually have a proper progress in their own financial um, well-being, they also have a responsibility or things that they need to do. Uh, there's a lot of work that falls on their side. And because of that, it is important that they know what part they play before they go for the fourth element, which is uh, thinking about the future. Because when we discuss thinking about the future, that's where we involve uh, financial planners the most. I will not dwell much on the fourth one because I think my brother, Uyanga, has actually touched on it a lot um, and addressed a lot of things that we do when we actually get into the process of financial planning. So I wanna talk about the first three. Um, let me actually share this with you so that you can see where I am at um, so the 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 theme of uh, was this, uh, still on the theme of uh, the importance of financial planning uh, I just took this and I put it up now. Still on the on the on this theme, uh, we are we are talking about the importance of financial planning, and and maybe before I go into the four elements that I spoke about, let me just uh, touch on a few. There's a lot of things, but let me touch on a few things that um, I I believe every person should keep in mind and know why we actually do this whole financial planning uh, thing. So the main thing is number one. When we do financial planning, we, we actually want to target things like, or ensure things like proper goal setting, where clients then are able to actually set goals that are, 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 are measurable, goals that are specific, goals that can actually be reached, right? And in, in, if you don't have that, you don't participate in the process of financial planning, then you never get to the part where you can actually have proper goal setting. So you never get to the part where you can actually say your goals are quantifiable in a, in a, in a more specific manner. The, the, the main issue also becomes when you don't have someone that you talk to about this, you, you are basically, uh, I would say you are basically flying blind because you don't have anyone who either holds you accountable or who helps you with the strategies that you need to follow and who is a professional in the industry who can tell you exactly how to achieve the goals that you have. So it, it is not enough to just have the goal, but it helps to have someone who can actually help you on reaching that goal, someone who's professionally trained, who's licensed, who's accredited, who's certified. Uh, 
and then they help you with that and also it's, it's someone who is like a personal trainer for your finances someone who comes in and says look this is what you need to do this is how you're going to do it so that is that is that is the, the first thing the goal setting becomes much easier because in the process of financial planning we actually do a lot of that right and then also when we do financial planning we also ensure financial security a lot of people actually never get to the space where they are financially secure because they don't have a person who helps them to achieve that another point is debt management people don't know how to actually settle or manage their debts they don't know what to go for they don't even know how to borrow when it comes to that or negotiate when it comes to the borrowing so this is where also financial planning comes into place and it helps a lot with people who need to get maybe either get into or get out of or manage their debt another part that we touch on is tax planning um, in, in acquiring assets, in, in disposing assets, donating income and all those things, there's a lot of tax implications that you see. And it helps to have a financial planner who tells you how to best plan for your taxes so that you can maybe not pay as much tax in some, in some instances, right? And then um, saving and investing. Most people do want to save. We talk about this a lot, but they never know what would work best for them or what would work best for their situation. So it helps to actually have someone who's going to say, look, look at this, consider this, try this. Someone who is actually like a sounding board in that space. Also budgeting and spending. It's another thing that we touch on a lot when we talk about financial planning. You need to know exactly how to budget, how to manage the income that you have. And most people will then say the little income you have because everyone always feels like whatever they have is not enough. Uh, but it, it helps to have someone who will help you budget and teach you how to budget. So this, these are some of the, 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 the key elements that come to play when we discuss the importance or we discuss financial planning as itself as a discipline or as a practice. So these are things that, like I'm saying, basically tip of the iceberg. These are some of the things. There's many others where it, it helps for a person to actually do take time to actually plan for their finances and to make sure that everything is fine. But anyway, moving into my presentation now, I want to discuss these four elements of financial well-being. Uh, the first one being debt management, uh, the second one lifestyle management, we will to talk about budgeting and planned spending, and then we're going to touch on uh, planning for the future. Uh, and I said already, we will not touch on planning for the future that much because it's basically the, 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 the more nitty gritty part of it where we actually go into risk planning, retirement planning, uh, re, uh, uh, investment planning, estate planning, insuring assets and, and the likes, which is something that I feel like Kuyanga Duma has covered. Uh, I'm going to talk mostly on the first three, which I consider um, a perfect stepping stone. When, when we have clients coming in and they have not yet made up their minds on these three, it becomes a, a bit tricky to go to number four. Or rather, when we have the conversation in number four, we actually pick up that it tends to go back to the first three to say there must be some changes that happen or that take place in the first three. Now, I said the fourth one, which is planning for the future, it is in most instances, the work of the financial planner anyway, or it's the work that you do when you're sitting in front of a financial planner or financial advisor. But the other three, it, it, the bulk of the work falls on the hands of the person who's the client in many instances. So the client has the responsibility to make sure that the first three, debt management, lifestyle, and budgeting is under control. Now, the reason why I want to talk about this is because if we are being fair, a lot of people can't even plan for the future because today is too heavy in itself, right? Even if you plan for the future, they can't afford to put money into the future because they're drowning in debt or their lifestyle is, is, is basically uh, they, are, they are knee deep or neck deep in, 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 in inability to spend properly. Um, where people actually end up making more or spending more than they are making. It, it's a lifestyle issue, that one. And then the budgeting and, and, and planned spending. Then you find also that some people don't even know how to budget. And then those who do know how to budget, they find themselves in spaces where 
they somehow just don't keep to the budget and, and, and they don't know how this is happening. So I, I, I don't have specific tips. What I have is, is principles that people need to follow when it comes to this. Because if you are in debt, you need to get out of debt. Before you can talk about the future and say what you want to invest in for the future, it is hard to invest for the future when you're drowning in debt. And there's a chance also that most people who end up drowning in debt, they are people who, in the first place, they were trying to live a lifestyle that is above what they can afford. And then um, now they are stuck paying a lot of debts and then there's a lot of things that they need to cover for today, but they cannot because somehow the money just doesn't make sense. And then we usually say things like there's too much month at the end of the money and we want to have a bit of money at the end of the month. So it, it gets tricky. It gets tricky for people to actually um, get to the point where they are financially secure because of these things. So like I said, before we sit down and plan for the future, today still has to be taken care of. So we want to talk about these things. And the first one that we want to talk about is debt management. Of course, uh, the, the truth is in this country, uh, a lot of things that we need to do cannot be bought cash. It, it, is, it is, we are not making enough money to buy a house cash. There are people who are, but most of us are not. We're not making enough money to buy a, car, a house cash. We're not making enough money to pay for some of the things. And in most instances, by, while you are starting with work, you already have these responsibilities of making sure that you have a car or maybe you have a place to stay. You have, it, 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 it becomes tricky. But luckily we do have the credit system where people are able to finance the things that you want so that you can have them, right? But then the relationship then becomes the bank buys this thing for you. And when they've bought it for you, then you have to pay it back sometimes with a, a hef, hefty amount of, of interest. But you, you get into that relationship where the, the bank pays for the house, you then start paying your mortgage uh, installments moving forward. So it, it, it's, it's how things are. So we, we can't really say people must not be in debt. Uh, the way things are right now require that at some point you will be in debt. At some point you will borrow money. In some instances also, we borrow money so that we can invest in some businesses or we can start our own businesses, whatever the situation may be. But one way or another, you will be standing in front of, of a lender and borrowing money. And then you, you, you will use that money. So now it, it is something that is very difficult to avoid. So the best thing is to be smart about it. And there, there are instances where people, because they qualify, they then feel like, nah, let me just borrow. We, we, we don't want to borrow for wrong reasons. So it also requires that you have the right reason. So the, 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 the first tip then is you need to be smart about it. That's the general idea. And how do you become smart about it? There's many things that we can touch on, but the few that I want you to know today is that uh, credit should not be for pleasure, but for serious progress. A person must not borrow money just for fun. You can't borrow money so that you can buy an expensive suit and look like you are rich. You can't borrow money so that you can buy an expensive car. And you can't borrow money for, for pleasure. You can't borrow money to go on vacation. You can't borrow money for things that don't move. You should not borrow money, rather. Let me put it like that. You should not borrow money for things that don't, don't give you progress. When you, when you go get money, when you go get credit, it should be because there's an opportunity, there's something that you want to do, there's something that needs to happen that's going to move you forward. It should not just be for pleasure. You can't borrow money so you can go to Stasa or you can go to uh, a camp or you can go to camp meeting. It shouldn't be the situation. You can't borrow money to cover things that do not bring you progress, but bring pleasure. That should not be the case. So, the, 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 every time you want to make the decision of borrowing money, the question should be, why am I borrowing money? Why am I taking this, this, this credit? Why am I using this credit card today? Why am I doing this? There must be a valid reason behind it. And then, then we can say, you can have a conversation about it. Okay. So now that, that's the first thing that I want you to know. The second thing I want you to know is that qualifying is not affording. A lot of people get into debt simply because they are told that they qualify. Look, you qualify to borrow 300,000 rand and they're like, okay, let me take it. So they take the 300,000 do, do, do not take credit simply because you qualify. That should not be the way of doing things. You can't do that. And, and, and keep in mind that uh, 
it, just because you qualify, the bank does not look at your lifestyle. They look at your affordability, how much you're making, how much you're spending on credit. So that's what, that's what they look at. Most people who qualify, they qualify because we they, they we looked at their income and we, we felt, okay, this person who earns this much, then by definition should be able to, uh, to afford servicing a credit of this much. That is what we look at. But you are the one who knows how much money you must send to your mom at the end of the month. You are the one who knows how much money must be spent on groceries at home. You're the one who knows what you need to cover. So just because you qualify doesn't mean you afford. You must look at affordability. You must look at how much disposable income do you actually have. Before we can discuss uh, going ahead with credit, look at the reality. It, 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 you qualify, yes, but always check the step further. Do I afford this? Can I afford this? Can I go ahead with this? Because like I say, qualifying is not affording. Another thing I want to touch on is that please keep in mind that credit is a way banks make money. So don't make the mistake of thinking that people are borrowing you money because they care about you or they care about your dreams. People are making money out here. So when you go borrow money, keep in mind that somebody is making money. So there must be there must be something in it for you too. It can't just be because the bank's saying, I qualify, let me take the credit. While they make money, it must be an opportunity for you as well to make money. It, that, that is how you must look at it. Look at it as a, these people make money, can I make money as well? Borrow from people who make money when you borrow, but also use that money to make money. I'm not gonna go to details in that one, but just keep that in mind. And then the, the, the last thing I want to touch on under debt management that I want you to know is that interest is a good or bad thing, depending on which side you are sitting. Now, there's a lot of discussions that we are having at this point, especially amongst the Christian community where we're discussing what does the Bible really say about charging interest when you borrow people money. But if, if we are just keeping things as they are right now, a lot of people have an opportunity to make money if they could actually invest and actually be the ones who make interest. If you can put money in a bank that borrows people money and then you, you make interest, that's a good thing for you. But if you're on the other end where you are receiving the credit, there's a very high chance that you are in trouble. So interest is a good or bad thing depending on which side you're sitting. So sit on the right side. Always ask yourself, how can I have some growth? How can I have interest growth in my money? And then you must keep that in mind. So anyway, that's the things I want you to know, but here are the things I want you to do. When it comes to debt management, there's a few things that we teach people that they must do. The first one is that you must prioritize your debts. Don't make the mistake of saying, um, we'll pay as we can, we'll see what happens. You must always be in, on top of your game. You must prioritize your debts. In most instances where you get to the part where you can't afford to service all of them, always start with the ones that have high interest and get them out of the way. Prioritize your debts, it's important. You don't want to be in a space where you can't pay them. Number two is make timely payments. It actually matters that you pay your debts on time. Now, it's, it's, it's a pity. A lot of people actually borrow money and they don't pay it back. And then some do pay, but they don't pay it on time. So it becomes a, a long line of just having mistake, making mistakes. At first you borrowed money you didn't need, and now you're struggling to pay it back on time. It becomes, a, it becomes a, a, an issue. So make timely payments. Uh, if you can pay more than the minimum, it always helps to offset the interest that you could pay. Um, we've seen that paying just about 10% more of what you're paying actually can reduce your interest a lot. And also sometimes in, in long-term loans, it can even reduce the term at which you can pay uh, the, the credit. The fourth one is the pay all the time pay on time all the time. That's important as well. You must do that. You must pay on time all the time. There must not be times where you don't pay on time. It matters. It goes into your credit history. It goes into your credit record. And you must make sure that you keep that on point. Now, another thing is also when you're taking credit, people just make a mistake of thinking just because I qualify as ish. It's a big mistake to do that. You can't just celebrate the fact that you qualify. You need to always negotiate. You must negotiate when taking your credit, you must negotiate the interest rate, especially because in many instances, the first offer you get is not the best offer. People always just celebrate the fact that I've gotten the offer, I'm fine, I'm taking this offer. And then you end up drowning in debt, end up paying ridiculous amounts of interest because you did not negotiate. So those are things that you must do. So on debt management, it's a responsibility that I want to shift to your side as financial planners to say, make sure that your debt is under control before you come to us to have the conversation. Now, lifestyle management. Now, let me, let, me, let me define this by saying, 
because a lot of us, a lot of us find ourselves in spaces where we, 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 we borrow money, we borrow money and then um, we, we try to look like we are richer than we are. We try to make it seem like things are better than they are. So we, we, we trying to make a life, we're living lifestyles that are basically uh, above our affordability. We can't afford to be living in places we're living at. We can't afford to be driving the cars we're driving. We can't afford to be wearing the clothes we're wearing. We can't afford to, to eat the way we A lot of things that we're spending money on, we mostly can't afford. So this is how we also we actually hold ourselves back in terms of um, in terms of making progress. So these are a few things I want you to know and actually make sure that you you do. Uh, the first one is uh, measure your your means and live beneath them. Uh, the, the main thing that we've been talking about is people live above their means. A lot of people live above their means. People are busy. They are spending more than they can afford, buying more than they can afford, and everything is just more than they can afford. Make sure that you know what your means are. Measure your means and live beneath them. That's how you make progress. The second one is do not be in competition with people. Be in competition with life. This one, actually, I want to explain it like this. When, when we are all in competition with life, we are trying to make progress in our lives. We're trying to live better lives. If you start competing with other people, you have lost focus of what you should be focusing on. You are now looking at the person next to you instead of looking at the life that's in front of you. And you will lose if you do that because your neighbor is not the is not in the same circumstances as you. They are not the, they are not you. They don't have the same responsibilities. They're not they don't have the same uh, goals. They don't have the same uh, needs. You can't then live a life like theirs when you are in a different space. Compete with life, not with people. So you want to make progress and make sure that you make a step further towards your goal. That's what you should do. You should not be competing with people. You can't say because your neighbor drives a better car, I must drive a better car. That's not your competition. Your competition is that in life, where do you want to be? And you keep making progress every day. That's it. Be flexible to adjust as need arises. There are people who actually cannot move back in terms of lifestyle. Like in, 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 in days of plenty, where they have stuff, where they have money, they, they celebrate. But it does happen sometimes that things just go south and things just go bad and you can't move forward. If that happens, be comfortable, be okay with saying, okay, fine, this is where I was last year, but because now I can't, I must downgrade. Be comfortable with downgrading. You don't want to hold on to things you can't afford simply because you want, you want people to see that you are going through a, a rough patch. Go through a rough patch properly. Going through a rough patch properly means you must go up and down as you need. You must improve as you, as you can. If you can't, you must go back. You must go back down. Be okay with moving from, from, from a gated community to a house in the township. If need arises, you do that. But if also things are good, you will come back and you will bounce back. But if you hold on to things you can't afford, you're making life harder than it should be. And there's no need for that. Save and invest. This one is straight to the point. In your lifestyle, you must know you prioritize saving. Don't prioritize how things look. Prioritize how things are. Put money aside, invest, and make progress. Prioritize essential expenses. Make sure that the things that are necessities are covered. It doesn't make sense for people to have things that look good, but things that matter are not covered. It doesn't make sense to drive a Range Rover but the light is always on because there's no petrol in the car. Always make sure that you, 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 you push things properly. Uh, practice uh, smart shopping or smart spending. It, negotiate, negotiate, buy what's affordable, go for bulk in some spaces, make sure that you don't spend more than you need to. Cover the basics. The basics must always be clear. What you need is a home with uh, a roof above your head, a warm home with water, electricity. Whether you live in the north or the south, there's another discussion that you must have when means allow, but the basics must be covered. If you need to move around and you need a car, you need a car that moves around. Uh, how the car should be, if it should massage you as you drive, it's another discussion for another day. So cover the basics. All the other things are basically the cherries on top, which you can and leave, you can live without. So you don't have to put yourself under pressure. Surround yourself with like-minded people. The other thing that, make, that makes me worry a lot is the fact that peer pressure still to this day affects a lot of people. And in fact, it's, it, it's, it's ridiculous how peer pressure affects you regardless of how old you are. You will have people in their 50s 
be affected by their peers who are also in their 50s and they end up making mistakes. So put people around you who understand what you're doing and who can then help you achieve your goal because they know what you're building. Don't put people who will put you under pressure to end up doing things that you don't want to do. And that is that on lifestyle management. Now, budgeting and planned spending. Now, the tricky thing about budgeting is that from my experience, I've realized that everyone can budget when the money is not there. But as soon as the money gets there, things change. It's, it's funny. It, when, we, when we don't have money, we are meticulous in budgeting. When the money arrives, we are careless at spending. So it, it becomes a tricky situation then because how do we help people to achieve their financial goals when on paper their goals are achievable, but in reality they are not. In most instances, the trick becomes that people don't hold themselves accountable. So they budget, but they never stick to their budget. So here are the five things I want to touch on. And this is the last point that I'm going to be thinking about, by the way. So number one is draw up a realistic budget and stick to it. Don't be too ambitious. A lot of people do this. They like making um, ridiculous plans, uh, unrealistic plans and say, I want to do that. You, if you know for a fact that you can't, be realistic. Look at your actual budget. Look at your spending. Take your three months bank statement, go through it and you will realize where you spend your money. Be realistic on how you want to improve. Improvements cannot be as drastic as you think they are. You cannot wake up tomorrow and just suddenly be a responsible spender. Sometimes you need to gradually become that, but draw up a realistic budget. What do you really need? Start with your needs. You go to your wants and you go to your savings and investment and stick to it. Number two is you must track your expenses. Like I said, go through the, 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 the bank statement. Don't, don't be in a habit of withdrawing the money. Leave it in the account and go through the uh, uh, expenses that you've, you've spent money on. What did I spend money on this month? What did I do? What happened? As you do that, as you do that, you get to actually see where your money goes. You get to see what actually happens. Then you get to see what to improve on in your budget. There's one, a lot of, a lot of rules that we use when we budget, but one of the most famous ones is the 50, 20, 50, 30, 20 rule, where we spend 50% on needs. So 50% of your income must go towards your needs, 30% goes towards your wants, and then 20% goes towards your savings and investments. Practice that thing, see if you can make it happen and stick to it. Also, a budget is not something that you write once off and then you never look at it, or rather, you write once off and then you try and stick to it. Sometimes you must review. In fact, regularly, you must review and adjust regularly. So get into that habit of budgeting. It doesn't matter how regular you want to do it. You can do it monthly. You can do it bi-weekly. You can do it weekly. It's up to you. But you can never actually have a budget and, and, and then not review it, not look at it ever again. At the, 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 the least you can do is look at it once a month and just to see how things are going. That's how you actually plan and budget better. And then number five is the one where use systems to stick to the budget. Sometimes some of us, when it comes to actually doing business or rather when it comes to actually spending the money, we are careless because we, we can't stick to what we promised ourselves to do. So the best thing you can do is set up things, put things in place, make sure that you have um, automated transactions already. When the money comes in, it, it goes where it should go. The money that must go to the house, goes to the house, goes to the car, goes wherever. Everything must happen as per your, your, your budget. Stick to it by, by using systems. Uh, payments that need to be made, make sure that they happen. Uh, luckily, right now, we're even able to do things like debit orders and, and whatnot. Make sure that your investments, everything is planned. Everything happens automatically. So you don't have to be the one that actually does it because a lot of people actually struggle to do it. So... That's that. After you've done these three things, then you can come to talk to a financial planner and say, okay, fine. In fact, you know, not after you've done them, but I'm saying these are things that actually fall on your side as, as a person who would want to talk to a financial planner. Make sure that these things are in place or at least make sure that you are open to hearing the financial planner telling you this is how you must do things. If you're open to hearing the financial planner tell you, then you're in a space where these three things that remain your responsibility, you can actually... A, a, a maneuver a few things in them. You can make changes and adjustments in them. You can make improvements. That is how you actually have that opportunity of moving forward in your finances. Then the fourth one, which I said I will not talk about is the one where now 
Now that we've done this, now think about the goals. What is it that I want to achieve? What is it that I want to see? What do I want to buy in the future? What are the responsibilities that are waiting for me in the future? If you have a child, you must know that that child's education is your responsibility. And depending on how old they are, it is coming for you in a few years or in a year. You are not lucky if it's in a year. Be lucky if you still have a baby because that means you still have time. So you look at that thing. Now talk about the goals. Where do I live right now? Where do I want to live? What do I want to see happening with my income when I've retired? What do I want to see happening if anything should go wrong with my health and if anything should go wrong and I become disabled? All those things are discussions that you have in front of the financial planner. But these things that we have spoken about, you must make sure that they are taken care of. Uh, that is my story. And uh, I will end there for now. I wish you all the best. I hope that the information that has been shared has been uh, truly beneficial. I hope that the information that has been shared is going to help a lot of people. But also, information is not enough, especially if actions are not taken. I hope that people are ready to take action. And I hope that people are actually going to make to take their finances seriously. We consider the monies that we make as a blessing and blessings must be treated with respect. Blessings must be multiplied where possible. Blessings must be protected and must be appreciated. Now we don't want to be in a space where God has given us abilities to make money. As Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 says, he gives us ability to produce wealth. When he has given us those abilities, we don't want now to be in a space where we would have made the money we end up being irresponsible with that money or we end up being in a space where the blessings are not fully enjoyed because we are not smart with those blessings. But more than anything, let's just be smart about money, man. Things are really tough right now and those who are not smart about their money are the ones who are going through the most emotionally and psychologically because it's bad. But otherwise, everything gets better over time. If you have not started the journey yet, please do start the journey. Find people who are financial planners and speak to them. Reach out to us. We're not really hard to find and see if we can help somehow. Reach out to Uyanga. Talk to him about this and see if he can help you with your, with your finances. Reach out to me as well if you need to. Uh, right now, I'm focusing mostly on business development for other financial planners, but I still have a license to practice. So if there's a need where I am needed, I will always pull through. But do reach out to people who are doing this. Find a person that you can trust and open up to because also I understand that the conversation of finances becomes a bit tricky, uh, especially because it's an emotional one. Uh, in instances where you are starting out, you are afraid of showing that you don't know. So you want to you wanna hold back and act like you do. I understand that. And in some instances also, you have started and you've done a lot of things and now you're afraid of showing what is happening uh, with your finances. But I have a, a philosophy that I usually share in the business space. And that is, if you can take off your clothes in front of your doctor so you can get help, you can actually show us what's happening with your finances so you can get help. I uh, thank you all for the opportunity. And I also want to thank the TOC for the invitation to share the information that we have shared. I wish you all the best. May God bless you all and keep well. Thank you. Mm -hmm.